everybody, it's Mary again, here with another craft at the library. This time we're making egg carton wall hangings. Now the first thing you're gonna need for this, of course, is a bunch of egg cartons. I used three. The cardboard ones do work better. You'll need some scissors. You need something to decorate your egg cartons with. I used acrylic paint. If you don't have paint, you can use markers. You can use spray paint if you have some spray paint. Um, you could use maybe food coloring if you want to dye them. Um, just anything that you can give the egg carton some color with. A paintbrush if you're using paint. And then some kind of string or twine or yarn, whatever your aesthetic dictates or whatever necessity dictates. And then you're also going to need a stick. So just find a stick in your yard, at a park, wherever. Just a stick that you like the look of. And that's all you need and then we'll get started. So first thing we're going to do is cut up our egg cartons. Um, start with three. If you decide you want a fuller wall hanging you can always cut up more um, but we're just going to start with three and what you're going to do is just cut up the egg cartons into different shapes. I'll get I'll show you some examples of different shapes. Cut these up first, and then we'll show you some different shapes you can try. Cutting these are a little, I wonder if tearing them is gonna be easier. Yeah, tear up your, if your egg cartons are anything like mine, they're pretty easy to tear. So just kind of tear them up. And then we'll use the scissors to cut them into more specific shapes that we want our flowers to be. Tear that up. That comes apart real easy. Much better with them without than with scissors. Okay. So there's a start. So we can make these into different shapes. And this one is already lending itself to one kind of shape. And we can just kind of trim it a little bit, maybe more naturally to like a rounded petal-ish thing. Trying to give it leaves. Uh, I don't know. So there you've got something. It's kind of got leaves and you can kind of bend it out like that. So it makes a flower shape. And yes, these ones on this side will be shorter, but that's fine. Just do this kind of thing. And then just kind of curl them over your finger out into a little flower shape. And if you want, you can trim this one down so it's a little bit more uniform. But with something like this, uniformity doesn't really matter because it's just meant to be like a folk art kind of thing. But you can also just kind of turn it into like a daffodil kind of thing, just kind of cut a bunch of petals like this. Maybe trim the edge a bit. See how I'm doing that. And then just do one petal there. What's it matter? And then again, just kind of open it up so it looks like a flower. So you're going to keep doing that with all your flowers, um, some with petals like this. 
some with petals like this. Now it's up to you whether you have an even number of each kind of flower. I was not even keeping track of how many of each. Oh, almost cut myself. Don't cut yourself. I'm going to go ahead and cut up the rest of these and then I'll meet you back here when I'm done with those. And you will meet me back here when you're done with all the egg cartons you want to cut up as well. Ta-da! Alright, now that you have all of your flowers cut up in all different varieties, now we're going to paint. So we're going to shuffle those off to the side. I think I'm going to kind of try to water down my paint because acrylic paint can be really kind of lumpy. Um, I don't know how this is going to work, but we'll see what happens. Because I, I, I don't want it to be a super saturated paint. I don't know how I'm going to do this without making a mess, but... We're just going to experiment. Now I think what I'm going to do to water down my paint, I'm just going to kind of use a damp brush. I don't know if it's going to work. I'm just experimenting here. Um, now as far as what part of the flower you paint, I think I'm mostly going to go with the petals and maybe some of the inside, maybe some of the bottom. It's really up to you as far as what aesthetic you're going for. Um, you can do the whole thing, you can do part of it, you can do whatever you want. I'm just going to kind of play around and see um, see what, what looks good. So I'm going to try a damp brush, kind of soup up that paint there. Yeah, I was afraid it was going to start running, but it's just kind of staying in place. So hopefully that kind of dilutes the color a bit, we'll find out. Yeah, and if I kind of spread it, it just, it's more of a dilute color, which is what I wanted. I want more of the suggestion of a color than the actual color, which will also make it dry faster. So keep that in mind. You do have to wait for this to dry before you can go on to the next step. And then I can just kind of get a suggestion. I What I'm going for, I don't want to completely lose the egg cartonness of, of what I'm making here. Um, I'm not going for a full flower fantasy. I'm just going for, I want people to realize what they're looking at and, and also realize it kind of doesn't look exactly like that anymore. I don't know what I'm saying. I just like the way it looks when the paper still shows through. This part's gonna take a while because you got a whole lot of flowers. There you go. Little lightly green flower. I'll set it aside to dry. And then let's try another one. Let's go with this nice green color right here. Get it a little bit runny. That's definitely darker. Could have used more water on that one. That's okay, I like it. Adding a bit of water does seem to make it go on a bit easier too.
is kind of nice when it doesn't have to be perfect. I can't do things that have to be perfect. It's too stressful. And this can be just whatever I want it to be. Okay, there you go, another flower. I like that color. All right, let's do another one. All right, let's do this bright green color. Let's do that on a small one. Get my goopy watery brush. Mix it in there. Yeah, that's nice and watery, I like that. That'll be nice. Ooh, that's just what I wanted. That's almost too water or watery, but that's okay. Go back and get more paint. Yeah, I have a gray green. I like that. Now this might not be your aesthetic. Pick colors and types of paint or marker that match your aesthetic. I'll do one more with you and then I'm gonna meet you at the end of painting. So you'll keep painting, I'll keep painting, and in a few minutes you'll pop back on the video and see what's next. So. Alright, so I'll hop off here and I will meet you back in a few minutes and we'll have our flowers finished done painting and we will head on to the next step and we'll see what's next in making these wall hangings. Alright, I'll see you in a bit. Alright, so now that you have all of your flowers painted, uh, we're going to poke holes in the bottom. Um, I just want to show you, so towards the end, I did start experimenting with mixing my paint. And as you can see, it did not turn brown. This one was just out of laziness, but some of them have some interesting mixed colors, mixed greens that I like a lot. Um, anyway, so now we're going to poke holes in the bottom. Look at that one, that's cute. I like that one. And so you're just gonna poke holes in the bottom. You can see the holes there that I've started poking. And you'll just do that with a pair of scissors or another sharp implement while being very careful. And you're just gonna poke a hole. And your flower might still be a little bit damp. If it is, just give it a little bit more time to dry out because you could tear your plant, your, your flower while you're trying to poke the hole. Um, could warp it a bit, but do your best and just get that part done. You can tear off the bottom if the bottom pops out if you'd like, or you can leave it. See, that one was too wet, but that's okay, it's fine. 
Okay, finish poking your holes and then meet me back here. And once you have all of the holes poked in your flowers, you're gonna take a piece of twine or yarn or whatever you decide to use and you're gonna cut seven 40 inch strips. Then once you have those, go ahead and tie a knot in the bottom. Just a little knot'll do. It doesn't need to be too tight. And then you're gonna string your flowers. Now you wanna make sure your flowers are facing down. So the top of the flower goes down and just string it through like that. Bring it through like that. And then you've got your little flower on a string. And then just tie the next one and you're gonna put five flowers per string and you can put them as spaced as you'd like, as evenly spaced as you'd like, etc. I'm gonna do mine about like that. And then string the next flower. Now as you're stringing the tip of your whatever might get a little bit frayed so you might want to double it over like that. It can make it easier to just poke through there and then grip and pull on through. And there you go. You can see it coming together another knot there's no way mine are going to be evenly spaced because I can't do things like that string another one one more. And there you go. You've got your five flower strand. And yes, you can tell mine's a little uneven, but I don't mind that. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna do six more of those. So you have seven total strands. And so go ahead and finish stringing those. So once you have all of your flowers strung and all seven strings of flowers, you're gonna take your stick uh, that you found either out in your backyard or on a hike or something, and you just wanna tie the strings to the stick. So, so just tie the strings to the stick. You might wanna kind of wrap it around a couple times and then just do a half hitch. Hard to do when you've got your stick just on the table, but 
Do your best. And you can trim that, not too short, because I know at least this is, I don't want it to unwind. And then you've got that hanging on there. So something you can do is to kind of, so that the lengths as they dangle are a little bit different, kind of make this flower a little lower than that flower next to it some variety and try to space them evenly as you dangle and you can kind of shift them when you get to the end in case you end up I'm gonna try a square knot this time I don't know what kind of knot that is. Anyway. You can kind of shift them when you get to the end. Budge them a bit. So see that's, well. See how that kind of, and I'll show you better standing up. So just keep doing that. Okay. I'll give you the stand-up look at it in a second. We might have to adjust some of these so that they're hanging the right direction. But the last thing you wanna do so that you can hang it is you wanna take another strand of, another piece of your twine and just tie it on either end so that you have some way to hang your wall hanging, as it were. There we go, I can do a square knot this time. And you can adjust this however long you want it. it. Got your wall hanging and again I'll give you a stand-up look at it in a second here but there you go that's how you do it. All right and so there you have it your finished wall hanging. Oh, mine got fell down a bit and that might happen they might fall down just put them back and you might have to fix the spacing a bit of some of your hangings but Got a nice little varied wall hanging. You wouldn't know they were egg cartons. So be sure to share pictures of your creations in the comments below. I always love seeing what you make. Um, going forward, we don't have anything planned right now, but if there's any crafts you'd like to make with us, be sure to let us know and we'll see what we can do. Um, don't forget about Lattes with Librarians, Fridays at 10.30 in the morning here on Facebook. It's a great way to keep up to date on what's happening at the library and get a little bit more insight into what goes on behind the scenes. Well, thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you later. Bye.